Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Zuri Pickups. In today's video, we'll be talking about the Nike Lab Calcuso Zoomfly SPs in the black and white colorway. Um, so these shoes released uh, October 6th of 2018 for a retail price of $190. Uh, they came out in a pack of three different colorways. There was this black one and there was a gray one and there was a blue one. I'll show the pictures right here so you guys can see. Uh, I opted to go for the black one just because of the, the whole crossbones motif. You know, I wanted to keep it Jolly Roger style with uh, the black and white. And I think it turned out real good. Uh, this is definitely one of the sickest looking Zoomfly SPs I have personally ever seen. So yeah, definitely props to the guys behind the design. Speaking of the guys behind the design, let's talk a little bit about uh, the background of this collaboration. So Kyakuso is a collaboration between Nike and Jun Takahashi. Uh, that's been going on for about like eight years now. I think the first one came out in 2010. Uh, Jun Takahashi, for those of you that are not familiar with him, he's the uh, the founder of of Japanese streetwear brand Undercover. Uh, Undercover is really big in Japan, but I think here in the Western world, they're more known for their collaborations with Supreme, which pretty much happen like at least once a year at this point. So yeah, uh, definitely like a big name in, in streetwear. Um, Another thing about June is that he is like an avid runner. He has been known for his love of running and I think that's why Nike approached him to do kind of like a, a streetwear slash performance running line that uh, was Kyakuso. And uh, you know, this started back in 2010 and, and the whole kind of like motif was that, you know, he didn't really like the uh, the design of the performance apparel that was out there for running. You know, he thought a lot of the running clothes made you look like a fluorescent traffic cone. You know, I guess for good reason, right? You want to be visible to cars and stuff. But, you know, he, he wanted something with a more muted color palette, some different colors that normal kind of like performance running companies didn't use. So, you know, he uses a lot of darker colors like blacks, grays, and olives and stuff like that. And I think it goes kind of hand in hand with the actual name of the collaboration, Kyakuso. So in Japanese, that literally means like running backwards or I guess running in the wrong direction. Uh, Kyako stands for backwards and so is to run. So it's like, uh, wrong direction backwards running uh, and you know like when you go to a running track you normally run counterclockwise to do this is to run you know clockwise against the grain so that kind of embodies the design philosophy it's like oh you know we're going against the grain we're, we're doing something opposite from what other people are doing and that is kind of like the spirit that embodies this collaboration that is Kakuso. So that was that was the mouthful. That was like a huge bit of uh, history there. Probably a little more than you guys care about, but I definitely thought it was a cool story behind the, the origins of the collaboration. But enough of that, let's start talking about the actual features of the shoe and um, you know how it differs from a normal Zoomfly SP. So let's start with the upper here. The upper material is a stretch weave upper. The entire upper is consisted of stretch weave. So at this point, we've seen a ton of shoes with stretch weave, but uh, I gotta say the, the OG shoe to come out with stretch weave, I think for the first time is actually the Zoomfly SP. Uh, we've seen a bunch of like off-white shoes, like the Virgil shoes come out with the stretch weave upper. Uh, the the off-white Converse's also had the stretch weave upper. And most recently we had the uh, the React Element 87s with the stretch weave upper. So Nike has been using that material a lot, but the first shoes to ever use those, I think to be publicly released was the Zoomfly SPs. So this, the, the upper makes a return here. No differences there um, from a normal Zoomfly SP. It also has the signature kind of ribbon that goes around the upper here. Uh, this ribbon uh, print, it, it definitely looks cool and adds to the aesthetic. It's also functional. It adds a little bit of rigidity and structure to the upper. Uh, the stretch weave material is not uh, a material that has any sort of structure. So without this support, it just kind of like falls down on itself. As you can see here on the um, Element 87s, without that kind of like, without anything to hold them up, the, the thing kind of collapses like a deflated balloon. It's, it looks a little sad, but um, you can see that here on the Zoomfly SPs, 
these ribbons kind of help the shoe stay upright and gives it that um, shoe-like shape. So I definitely like this um, this ribbon here. And and you know that's this, it's pretty much exactly the same on a normal Zoomfly SP. The ribbon just carried over uh, one to one. Uh, so moving on to the lateral side here, you can start to see some differences. Um, on the lateral side of the uh, Calcuso Zoomfly SP, you can see that there is a little baby swoosh that is done in white. On the normal Zoomfly SP, there's this like mega swoosh. So, you know, that has gotten a lot smaller. Um, so branding has gotten a little bit more subtle here. Uh, moving up further along the heel, you have this crossbones print, which I definitely think is like super sick. You know, that's definitely the highlight of the, the design. You know, it kind of carries that that undercover type uh, motif, that, that kind of theme, and I, I definitely dig it. Um, moving along to the medial side of the shoe, you can see that it's pretty much identical to the normal Zoomfly SP. You got the mid-size swoosh, uh, nothing to really note here. Um, you even got the same uh, taped seam here along the medial side that the normal Zoomfly has. So nothing really to note here on this side. Moving to the tongue and the, the lace structure, uh, I think the Zoomfly SP really has a unique tongue and lace structure. So uh, these two shoes, you know, they pretty much share identical tongue and lace structures, but since it's really interesting, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it anyway. Uh, so the, the lacing cage on the Zoomfly SP, you know, you don't actually have a separate cage here. The cage is, it's essentially the material of the upper kind of folded into itself like so to create these little loopholes and, and the laces just go through these loopholes here. So, you know, there's not another material here. It's just the um, internal material, the this kind of like um, synthetic suede that they have all throughout lining the shoe. It just folds over and creates these lace loops and turns into this cage. So I, I think this is kind of like an ingenious design. It's a very simplistic design, but it gets the job done. It supports your midfoot and it reduces weight, reduces materials. So, you know, uh, I really like the fact that the Zoomfly SPs do this. And on this shoe, you can see that, you know, nothing has changed. It's, I guess it's kind of like one of those, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of thing. So you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy that they did not change anything there. Um, moving up to the uh, tongue, you can see that you have the same asymmetric tongue that the Zoomfly SP has. Uh, this is also uh, another signature feature of the Zoomfly SP. Uh, a lot of people are like, you know, why is the tongue shaped like this? It's essentially because, you know, your left foot and your right foot are shaped differently. So you have a asymmetric tongue. Um, your, this kind of like conforms to the shape of your ankle. And uh, when you lace it up pretty tightly, it actually fits pretty comfortably. So I, I'm definitely digging this tongue on the Zoomfly SPs. So on the tongue, actually, you have a little bit of a design difference here. You have the Nike Calcuso logo right there uh, in place of the Nike Zoomfly SP logo on the vanilla shoe. And also on the inside of the tongue, you don't see any branding uh, versus the uh, regular zoom flies you got all this stuff going on you got you know the nike little pinwheel and a bunch of text printed on there so you know that is slightly different the laces that come with the shoe are your standard kind of ribbon laces that are the exact same laces as the normal zoom fly sp uh, even the uh, lace tips are the same they say nike on one side and racing on the other side um, I, I'm not a fan of these laces actually because I have noticed that they get untied pretty often. Uh, these they're they're kind of like slippery nylon laces and they won't really stay put. Um, so when you're actually running in them or and, and and they're flopping around a lot, they kind of start to unravel and get untied. So not the biggest fan of these laces, but I mean they definitely do look cool though. Moving to the inside of the shoe, you can see the heel area is backed with that same uh, synthetic suede material that the inner cage is made out of. And there is a little bit of padding here along the heel to prevent your heel from popping out. There is actually like no heel counter per se, like in this shoe, like some traditional shoes. But this padding here on the heel does a decent enough job of keeping your heel locked down. And that's kind of like the same on the normal Zoomfly SPs. Uh, this uh, little strip on the back 
where the normal Zoomfly SPs say Nike Racing. You can see on the Calcasos, it's just a black strip with no branding. And you can also see that the numbers on the lateral side heel have been removed on the Calcaso version. So it's like a more clean, blacked out, murdered out version of the, the Zoomfly SP. Moving to the inside of the shoe, you have a removable sock liner, which uh, is this lovely mango yellow colorway. And uh, you have some co-branding here. It says Calcuso, Calcuso International Running Association by Undercover Lab. And you have the little undercover logo. Uh, you have this exact same text along the uh, lateral side midsole right there. Uh, this, these are the only places you actually see the undercover branding on this shoe. Uh, so you only see it in two places. So it's really subtle, but it's definitely there. So moving along to the midsole, you can see that it is a blacked out midsole with a white ribbon going through the middle. So this white ribbon is supposed to kind of like represent the carbon infused plate inside the, the shoe, kind of uh, mimicking the shape of it. And yeah, apart from this text here, nothing really different. I guess on the Zoomfly SPs, you have the, the Nike Fast text on the medial side, which you know this shoe does not have, but instead it, it has the Kalkosu branding on the lateral side. Moving to the outsole, um, pretty much a standard Zoomfly SP outsole. It's kind of hard to tell because it's black on black, but this top part, the forefoot is rubber, um, very similar to how the forefoot on the other Zoomflies are rubber. This uh, mid portion is exposed lunar lawn, and then you have these uh, little rubber nubs on the heel for a little more additional durability. So these nubs on this colorway have been done in the same mango yellow colorway as the sock liner, which kind of ties it together really well. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers the features and construction of the shoe. Now we're gonna get to the fun part, the juicy part of the video that you guys have been waiting for. How does this shoe uh, perform? How does it feel to run in? You know, how does it fit, etc., etc. So, I mean, even before I talk about that, there's something I would like to get out of the way. And, and it's the fact that this shoe has a Lunar Lawn midsole. When they first announced this shoe, um, they said that this shoe would have a React midsole. It, it, it said it features React technology. And even now, if you go on the product page on Nike.com, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put up the video right now. It literally says the shoe features React cushioning technology. So I was like super excited because you know, I, I love React foam. I think it's way better than Lunar Lawn in terms of straight up running performance, right? So, you know, I, I have like three pairs of Zoomfly SPs already at this point. I really didn't need another pair. Um, I was tempted at this collaboration, but I was like, yeah. You know, I don't need another pair of Zoomfly SPs. I have too many. But then I saw that it had React Foam. I was like, oh, React Foam. And I knew that, like, I think the most recent iteration of the Zoomflies, like, with the, the fly in it, I believe, had the React midsole. So I was like, oh, that's plausible. You know, that makes sense that the, the collaboration, the, uh, the, the Calcuso model, would have that upgraded react midsole so i was like oh you know what like if it has a react midsole i'm gonna buy it I'll, I'll i'll shell out the 190 bucks so when it came out i bought it thinking it would have the react midsole but then you know i got it delivered and i, I kind of pulled it out of the box felt the foam and i was like oh this feels kind of dense like it doesn't really feel like react and and so i busted out like my other zoom fly sps you know compared it side by side i felt it i pressed the foam and right now I'm pressing the foam side by side and they literally feel exactly the same. They, like the Lunar Lawn here and, and the, cush the foam here, they feel exactly the same. I was like, there has to be some sort of mistake, right? Maybe it just feels similar. So you know, I, I got out my pair of Epic Reacts. These are all React foam. And I, I, I pushed the foam side by side. And I definitely have to say that the, the React foam is softer and more cushier than the Lunar Lawn. It's, this is a denser, kind of like heavier foam that's harder. Uh, and, and I can definitely feel the difference. Also, the texture of the foam is slightly different as well. Um, further reinforcing the fact that this is not React. This is actually Lunar Lawn. Um, Pretty much the same story when I compare against the uh, React Element 87s. The, the Element 87s have a softer cushion. Uh, this is definitely uh, a lot cushier. The React over here is a lot cushier than the foam over here. So finally, you know, I just put my left shoe in the Calcasos and my right foot 
in the normal vanilla Zoomfly SPs and walked around and you know they literally felt the same. They did not feel different at all. So uh, basically my conclusion from this super unscientific method of testing was that this is not a React midsole as advertised. This is a Lunar Lawn midsole. I, I don't know how this mistake happened. This seems kind of like a glaring mistake on Nike's part. Maybe initially it was supposed to be React and then they eventually changed it, but they forgot to change the copy and then the wrong copy got sent to the e-com team and it just got uploaded on the website. As someone who's worked in e-commerce before, I, I can totally see that happening. It's like a totally plausible thing to happen. But long story short, you know, this is not a React midsole. This is a Lunar Lawn midsole, and thus the performance of this shoe will be exactly identical to the performance of a normal Zoomfly SP. Um, is that a bad thing? No, not essentially. I, I don't think the Zoomfly SP is a bad shoe to run in at all. Uh, it still has that carbon-infused plate that gives you that spring, that bounce, and I think um, it's a really fast shoe. Um, and, and I took it out for a run today. Uh, I, I normally don't really run long distance. 3.1 miles, like a 5K is the distance that I run every time. I, and I don't really run past 5K. And, um, you know, doing 5K in this, like it, it felt good. Like, uh, I didn't run like super fast, like around like a nine minute mile. Um, it, it definitely like propelled me forward and it's definitely a really playful feeling shoe. But I did notice that towards the end, the fact that the cushion was so hard and not really absorbing too much of the impact, I could start feeling the impacts a little bit in my ankles. You know, I'm a bigger guy. I'm like 220 pounds. So, you know, all my weight bearing down on my ankles, there's a lot of impact there. So, yeah, it definitely left a lot of... Uh, room for improvement, I thought. Um, and and essentially that's why I was really excited for this shoe to be a React shoe because React, you know, it, it definitely absorbs impact a lot better. And I thought the uh, carbon fiber infused plate with the React would be a great combination. But as it stands now, I would say this is a great shoe for speed work. Anything under like a three mile run, I think you should be fine. But anything kind of over that, I don't really think this would be appropriate for that. Also, I have to um, address the narrowness of the shoe. The Zoomfly SPs are very narrow shoes. So if you have a wide foot, this is definitely not the shoe for you. Um, so my foot definitely has a lot of arch overhang since it's wide. And when I run in this, due to the fact that I have so much overhang here, like I tend to over pronate a lot. And that takes a toll on my ankles as well on top of the impact. So all in all, in terms of straight up performance, you know, I, I can't really give this shoe super high marks. I think I'm just going to go back to the original shoe that I've been running in for straight up performance. Uh, I use a Saucony Kinvara 9 and I've, I, I've loved that shoe. In terms of straight up running performance, I don't think this shoe really uh, lives up to its name. However, I think for a casual kind of like athleisure type everyday shoe, this shoe will have no problems filling that role whatsoever. So let's talk about fit and sizing. So this is a Zoomfly SP, meaning that it is a tiny shoe. So you definitely want to go one full size up. So I'm a size 13 normally, so I went up to a size 14. And, and even with that full size up, there's a little bit of snugness. For a shoe that you're gonna run in, you definitely want to have a little bit of extra room around your toe box because when you uh, land on your foot, your, your toes kind of tend to spread out. So you want to give your toes ample room to spread out. If not, they don't get to spread out and all that impact gets absorbed into your foot and up into your ankles and your knees and your back and so on and so forth. So it's important to have a wider toe box. Um, so yeah, definitely size up one size on these for sure. So all in all, to summarize, I would say, you know, this shoe has really great design, A plus design, design totally knocks it out of the park. Haven't seen a Zoom fly this sexy in a while, but when it comes to straight up performance it falls a little bit flat on its face this is definitely not a shoe i would recommend for serious kind of like long distance runners but if you're just kind of like a casual runner you know you run a mile here or run a mile there this should totally be fine for you in fact this is like a really fun shoe to run in for those uh short fast type runs so yeah um 
And I throw these on foot so you guys can see what they look like. And uh, once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.